Hello and welcome to a short video about the retreat I just had in Sedona, Arizona called Unscripted. To give you an idea of what I'm going to cover during this video, I have a bit of an agenda just to keep myself on track because it could be easy for me to talk for a long time about all the different things that happened. But I'm hoping that through this video I can communicate to you what it felt like to be there, what we covered, what was on the agenda, so that you can make a future decision on whether or not this retreat might be for you. So the agenda, just so that you're aware of it, is for me to share with you the story of why it's called Unscripted, where that came from, the idea behind planning this event, uh, the agenda. I'm actually going to show you an image of the agenda to give you a really solid idea of what we did. I set intentions that I'm going to share for every attendee and then an intention for the event. And then I'm going to go through the agenda and share a couple of the things that happened and people who came and spoke. And then I will be sharing with you a little bit about the attendees, but I will be giving you contact information so that you can reach out directly to them so that they can be in charge of sharing their experience. Because it's such a small, intimate event, I definitely do not want to share things without their permission, and I would prefer for you guys to get that information directly from them. But then I will share with you how you can get on the wait list, and then I will also go through my notes and actually give you at the very end some of my aha moments and breakthroughs that I had personally. So you can stay through to the very end for that if you like. And if not, skip to the part that you're most interested in. And I'll try to make sure to put in the notes uh, where I am with each section. So to start off with, the story of the name of this retreat, Unscripted, happened in a ferry line. So I was on Woodby Island coming back from Woodby with my boyfriend, Tom, and we got our ticket for the ferry and the lady said, okay, it's about 40 minutes until the next ferry. And so we get in line and I don't find out any of this until later, but on the inside, I guess my boyfriend was freaking out. He was like, what am I gonna talk to this woman about for the next 40 minutes? What am I gonna do? I, sh I need to leave the car. <laughs> I can't do this. I'm not gonna have, there's not gonna be enough to talk about. And as soon as I parked the car, we just started chatting and started talking like we always do about everything and anything under the sun. And before you knew it, we looked up and the ferry was arriving and he freaked out. He was like, how did that happen? That was no longer than five minutes and the ferry was here. And so he shared with me what he'd been thinking uh, as we rolled up and parked in the ferry line and it cracked me up. And so we, back then, it was probably about a year ago, we actually came up with the, this name Unscripted uh, because it's a lot of how I live my life. And so the short of the long story is I don't watch very much, if any, TV. I do like to watch movies on occasion, but I live my life so very much in the present moment that a lot of it is unscripted. Meaning I don't plan what I'm going to say. I don't plan what I'm going to do or think about all the time. I just go with what comes through. And that has become really evident to Tom uh, that I live so presently that it brings a lot, a lot of serendipitous things out, just things that I don't plan to say that end up having an impact, right? And so it just made a lot of sense that this retreat should be called Unscripted. Because while I have an agenda and I have things planned for us to do, because I like to ensure that I'm providing value for all of my attendees, a big part of this is also actually just completely checking out and getting a pattern interrupt from your life and being in the moment and being very present and getting to spend time around someone and other, not just myself, but other attendees who are there with you. And kind of seeing, I guess, how the conversation flows and the questions that I ask and the things that I might say that you wouldn't have thought of before. So that's the purpose behind the name of the retreat, Unscripted. The idea behind it was uh, one of the attendees, Jess, he and I were talking and he coached with me for about a year and a half. And we've stayed in touch ever since. And he brought up an idea to me as I was talking about, well, what, what should I do over the next six months to a year? And he said, Mo, I literally had a dream about us on a small retreat and you were leading us on a hike. And I was like, oh, that's interesting because I don't do a lot of hiking, but I'm always open, open to it and I love nature. And so as soon as he said it, I thought to myself, well, I've never done a retreat with just four or five people. This sounds delicious. <laughs> and so I just started planning it and it was probably about April and I set the date for August 11th through the 15th, and it just felt right. Um, 
And the idea that I, one of my big ahas actually from this weekend was that I am supposed to plan things that get me excited and bring me joy. Because when I am in that place of excitement and joy and feeling freedom and feeling ease, that is actually how I can best impact people around me. And that became very clear to me this weekend. This retreat uh, was not initially for my attendees. It was for me. It was the pattern interrupt. It was the pause. It was the reflection. It was the creative juices that I needed to keep my momentum going. And so... I created something that I really wanted to have happen and then I just happened to have five other people that joined me for the ride. And so that's the idea behind it. Now our agenda, I'm going to put a picture up here on the screen to actually show you what the agenda looked like. I intentionally created an agenda that had a lot of space between things because I knew that in previous events I tended to overpack the agenda and not give enough time for integration, reflection, pausing which is where so much of the learning actually happens. Uh, and I'm re being reminded right now, so much of the learning happens after the event. So we arrived on a Thursday evening. The event was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then we left Monday morning. So we got in Friday, not until about 10 o'clock. And Friday morning, we woke up and had breakfast right away and then went straight into a heart chakra opening experience with Demir. They tried my patience They tried to feed me their lies They tried controlling They tried to limit our lives I won't be treated Like I'm the waste that they buy I'm not defeated I'm not defeated I'm gonna go away Now I'm going to put his information here at the bottom of the screen and also in the text. You should definitely check him out. He's on Instagram, has a website. He is fabulous. And I heard about him through um, an Instagram influencer that I follow. And her name is Haley Hoffman Smith. Smith. She went to Sedona, Sedona back in March and had a fabulous experience with Demir. And so I found him on Airbnb. And I highly recommend that if you're ever in the area, you look him up and you do something with one of his experiences. So he came in and took us through a series of exercises, much like what you might imagine you would have for like improv classes or acting classes, and then took us through a meditation where we focused on our heart and focused on our inner child and talking to our inner child. It was amazing. His energy, his presence was very grounded. It's just, he is like the essence of a healer is the best way to describe it. And so while we were in the middle of our session with him, he actually stopped and said, you know what, I'm being called to ask if you guys would like me to come back for sound healing. If that's something you have time for this weekend, I'd love to come back and do that for you. And of course we were all like, oh my God, Demir, we're not gonna say no to that. That sounds lovely. <laughs> and so we left that session super excited for him to come back Sunday morning. Then we went into lunch and then the afternoon, and the rest of the agenda basically for Friday and Saturday was an exchange of energy healings with Kristen Wise of Wise Holistic Healing. And then while she would meet with a client for two hours, I would meet with somebody one-on-one -on -one for two hours and do uh, kind of like a coaching session or some would call it a breakthrough session where I would either do a tarot reading or an oracle card reading to kind of set the tone for, hey, what are we supposed to talk about during this session? And then based on whatever that attendee might want or need, we would work our way through. Uh, so it was, it was so much fun. Now to give you a little bit more of an idea of what an energy healing is, I'm not gonna fully explain it. I'm just, I'm a new energy healer myself. I got certified through Kristen Wise and it was a fabulous experience. Now I'm gonna give you my definition and how I explain it for myself and to other people, because I think this might help if you don't know anything about it. Um, if you've ever walked into a room and felt somebody's presence in either a negative or a positive way, that is energy. Now, energy can not, neither be created or destroyed. It can only be moved around. And so something I realized as a kid and as a teenager and as a young adult was that I had the ability to walk into a room 
and add to the energy in a positive way. There was something about my presence that helped people to feel calm, helped them to feel at peace, helped them to open up to me, helped emotions to flow. And so as an energy healer, I believe I'm like a vessel basically, and I can help energy move through me and help it move through whoever I'm working with. So that's kind of what Kristen does is she basically taps into your energy. She helps things to move through. So if you have stuck energy in different places in your body, it can actually cause pain. Uh, think of a headache, think of a stomach ache, think of heart, heart pain, think of, um, for me, I have varicose veins in my legs, and so that comes across to her as stuck energy in my legs, for example. Um, there's lots of things that can be helped with energy healing by moving those through your body and out. And so what Kristen does during these energy healings, I'll just give you a short summary, is she checks in with you, asks if there's an area that you want her to focus on, and then she'll talk you through it. You lay down, kind of like you would for a massage, um, but you're fully clothed, and she will share with you, will first ask you questions about what it is that you want to get out of it, if there's an area you want her to focus on, and then she'll just begin and she'll kind of talk you through it as she's doing it. And she usually likes to put like an eye cover over your eyes so that you can just be um, relaxed because that's the most important thing. You actually don't have to do anything as the client. Um, but what I find so lovely and so amazing is that when Kristen taps into your energy, other images and things come to her mind that she will share with you as it happens. And so each attendee's energy healing session with Kristen was completely different. And this is, if you're interested in hearing more about what happened during their energy healing sessions, I encourage you to reach out to them. Um, they are all open to discussing with anybody kind of the, some of the breakthroughs and things that happened for them. Um, so while Kristen was doing that, then I was doing the one-on-one -on -one coaching session, and then we would have a break, and then we had dinner, and then um, that evening, Friday evening, Kristen had her energy healing session with uh, one of the attendees. And the other thing about this too is I really worked with Kristen to collaborate and talk about the best time for each attendee's session. And so she actually picked the time slots. So this attendee, she wanted to have go to bed directly after the session because she knew that would help the information to integrate and they wouldn't overthink it too much. Um, so then we moved into Saturday, and Saturday was much more of the same. We didn't have any uh, special guests or speakers that day. We just had breakfast and then another energy healing session at the same, same time I had a coaching session with them. Then we had lunch, then we had another energy healing session and another coaching session, then we had dinner. And then that evening, Kristen led a yoga nidra session. And that is, I'm going to let you guys look that up because I am not privy to a lot of what that's about either, but she led a fantastic sh session that helped us discover our Sankalpa, which basically is like our meaning and purpose behind why we're here on this earth for this lifetime and helps us to name it. And then we went directly to bed after that. Sunday morning, we got up, had breakfast, and then we had Demir come back at about 930 for the sound healing session. And if you're familiar with sound healing, a lot of sound healers will use crystal bowls and a mallet, and they make a sound with the mallet, and each bowl can be assigned to a certain chakra in your body, which is an energy center in your body. And the vibration of sound has actually been proven to show that it will heal different parts of your body according to the vibration. It's amazing. If you've ever felt, like, felt especially connected to music, and uh, to the power of sound. Sound healing is something you should definitely check out. So we expected Demir to come with sound bowls and he did not. He came with his guitar and some speakers and he set it up and he sang for us actually as we were laying down and it was incredible. So we had that and then we moved directly into lunch and Demir actually ended up, we invited him for lunch. He stayed to have lunch with us and shared with us more of his story. And then we had Seth come in to talk with us that afternoon for a couple hours. And Seth is an angel communicator. And I'll put his information uh, in the text of this video as well. He is fantastic and highly valuable time spent with him. I actually found him through Haley Hoffman Smith's videos and um, information that she shared about her time in Sedona as well. So Seth drove about an hour to join us at the house in person. And then he... Basically, what he does is he channels from the angels 
messages for the group, for the earth, and for the individuals that are there. And so he started out by doing some general channeling and then uh, basically went one by one through us and shared with us information that they wanted us to know. And then we were able to go through and everybody got to ask one or two questions specifically. Incredible. Highly, highly recommend Seph. And that's S-E-P-H. And I'll put his contact information down below again. Uh, after that, we it was already Sunday afternoon. So we got our stuff together and we went into town to spend a couple hours just to give, I wanted to give people time to walk around the town, check it out, see if there was anything they wanted to get before they left. And then we had dinner at a restaurant called Mariposa. And that was where we spent some time just going through some of our aha moments and things we wanted to share and things we felt from the weekend. And I think something we all realized at the end of this trip was that there was a not there was not enough time for us to talk as a group. And so that evening we were supposed to do Yoga Nidra, but Kristen and I just really decided that it felt right to, to skip that and just have time for us all to hang out as a group. And so that is something that I learned for the next retreat that I'll be doing differently is giving us more time as a group to come together and talk through things because there's a lot of processing that happens during the event and it can be kind of overwhelming how much information you're taking in. So that was the agenda. Now I set intentions for every single attendee that came. Before we went to Sedona, I actually wrote each attendee a letter and just going with my intuition, shared with them what I felt like my intention was for them and I gave them a crystal to go along with that. So as an example, one thing I'll share with you is for one of the attendees, it really came to me that this was gonna be an opportunity for her to do further healing on her inner child. And so I set that intention in the letter and it was really cool to see how each person had their own intention along with mine, but all of my intentions were very clearly played out during our time together in Sedona. So it just reinforced for me the importance of setting intention with everything that you do. Whatever you intend to have happen is what will happen. But if you have no intention and it's not clear, then nothing, nothing might happen. So my intention for this entire event, for this retreat, was to create space, a safe space, so that people could break open and experience something new about themselves, learn something new, and come from a place of, hey, let's get curious. We don't know everything. Let's explore together, and let's allow this to be a space where we can explore freely and feel safe to do so. Now, the attendees, I'm going to share their information down below if they're open to having you reach out to them. There were four attendees this time and then two teachers, myself and Kristen Wise. And I already know that Kristen would be open to having you reach out, so please go ahead and do that. If you'd like to get on the wait list for the next retreat, you can go ahead and send me an email at mo at iloveitwhen.org. I will most likely be doing these three or four times a year because that's what I want, <laughs> is something at least quarterly and not just in Sedona, but all over the world. So if you'd like to get on the notification list for that, shoot me an email. All right, so now I want to share with you some of my own personal notes and uh, breakthrough moments and things that I realized during my time in Sedona. So I got my notes. Uh, some of my ahas are were my intentions, like I just mentioned for them, were right on. So because I took the time to pause and really think about each individual, and I knew each of these individuals coming into the event. I didn't know them very well. Some of them I knew better than others, but I was still able to feel into what was it that they needed to get out of this event. And so that was really amazing to see happen. And then do what I love and what lights me up. That is what will actually serve best. Now, I want to say, like, as someone who has always felt a desire and a drive to serve humans and to serve the world, I feel like it was always taught to me through society and through movies and TV that it's about giving, 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 and giving so much that you're almost just exhausted from giving. And so this concept that I'm actually supposed to serve myself first is a weird feeling. It feels selfish, right? Like if you try it on for yourself right now and this is not normal for you, it's going to feel selfish. But what I've learned is that when I feel full, when my cup is full and overflowing and I feel love and I feel joy and I feel peace and I feel abundant, I give from a different place. And I give in a way that is from a place of sincere and pure energy. And so 
each of, that's why I feel so passionately about each of us really being ourselves and coming to a place in this world where we can truly be ourselves. Because when you can do that, you give permission for other people to be themselves. And that is what I'm realizing is the most important piece. We need to all be able to act freely with love and just the idea that it's safe for us to be ourselves. Uh, the other thing I realized during my time in Sedona that it's, is that it's time for me to start doing my own energy healing sessions. So I was certified through Kristen Wise's classes probably about five months ago. And when I was in Sedona, I had an opportunity to practice an energy healing session on Kristen after she did, and then she did an energy healing session for me. And I realized how much fun it was, how good it felt to practice it. And so I'm going to start doing that myself and offering those just live and in-person sessions. Uh, or if somebody wants to fly me out to wherever they are, I will do that as well. So I felt called for that. And then it's also time for me to start dancing and singing. So I'm not sure exactly how that's going to unfold, but that's something I've been feeling for a long time. And so those were some of my big ahas. And then I'm gonna look back through my notes and just see if there's anything else that I wanted to share. Now I'm going through and I'm editing this video and realized I wanted to put in this piece about Dina our caterer from Arizona Sunshine Kitchen. So here's a quick bit from Dina about who she is and the kind of amazing food that she served us while we were in Sedona. It was a huge part of the experience. Dina is fantastic. If you're looking for someone, she travels all over the world. <laughs> Her food was incredible and so much in line with what I wanted for this retreat. So meet Dina. My name is Dina Tatro and I am the executive chef and owner of AZ Sunshine Kitchen located in Northern Arizona. And I wanted to take um, just a moment to reflect on a really wonderful, wonderful group that I just prepared food for. Um, it was led by this really wonderful human being. Her name is Margaret Smith and she uh, has this lovely, lovely, lovely um, blog and counseling, etc., etc. called I Love It When. And so I thought that'd be a really great way to say, I love it when. Um, when I prepare food and why do I do it? I love it when I can prepare with whatever my client is open to receiving. Um, one thing I really loved about Margaret Smith was this. She just said, do what you do. I know you'll do it well. And I'm really happy with whatever we're going to have. I trust you. And I thought that was just the kindest thing I'd ever heard. I trust you. Um, food is really unique in the sense where um, it is my job to prepare something really yummy, right? However, what I really love to do is prepare something yummy, nurturing, soothing, exciting, and really, really passionate for someone to eat it. I love it when they feel passion when they eat the food. I love it when um, I put flower petals on the salad and they get really excited because they never knew, who knew, holly hacks, you can eat them. And they come in magenta and, and baby pretty pink and white. And you mix it up in a salad, mix with tossed greens and oh, you have basil growing in the garden. So why not put that in a vinaigrette, put some fresh fruit. Um, so when I was preparing the food for um, Margaret's really wonderful retreat, I did just that. I just went in my garden, I harvested a bunch of unique fun things, anything that was growing that was edible basically. And I was able to incorporate that into all of her foods for her and her clients. And I like to say that her clients are not my friends because when you cook and prepare food for someone, I really, really believe you are entering into their community and you are then now part of their community. And the whole idea about preparing food for people is to make that community and find the word unity within it. A little cheesy, I know, but it's really, really true. Um, so that's probably my passion for, for preparing food, cooking, is really the connection with other human beings and just the, the friendships that are forged. And I find that kind of interesting because you'll, you'll, you, here you are harvesting all this yummy food and um, preparing it for people and um, you don't realize what you're really doing are harvesting these friendships and these soul connections that are so, so wonderful. So moving forward, um, here's a few things I did for them. Um, so we'll talk about holly hacks. Who knew holly hacks are amazing for digestion, 
They're really easy to grow. They come up year after year after year. Their colors are amazing. It's like eating a little petal, a little sunset in a petal. They're fuchsia, they're orange, they're pretty pink. They're a, a, a deep purple. They're lovely. I toss that with some greens. Um, I'll take some, um, some seeds or almonds, um, walnuts. I'll, I'll go ahead and soak those and then roast them lightly. And usually I'll go ahead and um, candy those with some thyme or rosemary from my garden and, and put those on top. And what's most fun about cooking is it's really um, about the group and the impetus of how they want to receive your food. And this particular group was all about whatever I cooked. And what was nice is that really opened my heart to prepare whatever, um, whatever I could with the most love and grace and, um, and well, as Margaret says, gumption, and she's right. <laughs> it takes some, uh, it takes some courage to just cook whatever you want off, um, out of, out of your head. I'm not classically trained. Um, I just like to prepare good food for really good people. And, um, and I just feel so lucky that I get to do that. Okay. Let's talk about another dish I did. Um, let's see salad. Let's do entree. Um, free range rack of lamb. It's really important, I believe, to honor the animal and to um, prepare food that they've lived a loving life. Um, you are what you eat, so we might as well eat love, right? Um, uh, grilled the lamb, pan seared it in a house-made thyme ghee. The thyme was from my garden. It's a lemon thyme, which kind of popped the flavor. Um, and then that ghee is so rich and delicious. And lamb's already fatty enough, so you just do a quick sear. Um, put that over top of quinoa, toss with kale, some roasted roots, some sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are amazing. They actually, um, um, when you harvest them around fall time, they will actually um, contain serotonin in them. So when you see the dark skies kind of looming, you actually have serotonin growing right out of the ground. So when you're having a bad day, eat a sweet potato. Um, moving forward, lots of mint, um, fresh herbs. They are the unsung heroes of culinary just like really the dishwasher is the unsung hero of um, the kitchen. Um, let's see here. So for dessert, a really yummy mousse. This mousse was unique. There were some people who had um, dietary restrictions or sensitivities to dairy. So avocado, chocolate mousse, lion's mane, good for the brain, good for the neuroreceptor sites, uh, connects all those good things back together that may have broken off here and there. Lion's mane is known to be um, a tonic for the brain to keep our, our nerves strong, connected. Um, so a little bit of lion's mane, cacao, uh, blend that all together. Um, some fresh berries and a little bit of cinnamon and voila, you have a really yummy uh, dessert that's actually good for you. So there you are. Well, thank you world. Thank you everyone. Thank you Margaret Smith for letting me prepare food for your lovely people at your retreat and um, have a lovely day. I will say that one of the cool things that I can never predict, that I can never say how it happens, is that it's not just me or Kristen who is leading and teaching. Each of the attendees brings their own intentions, their own energy, their own presence to the event, and it always adds to it. So the combination of the people that were there were just, it was just perfect. It was just as it was meant to be. And I learned something from everybody who attended. I also wanna share that there were a lot of signs that happened over the weekend and I can't possibly name them all here, but it really reminded me that what I was doing was the right thing. And it was such confirmation and such validation with each of the attendees. One example is that I pulled some Oracle cards for one of the attendees when I was meeting with them one-on-one. -on -one. And the three cards that I pulled, if you're familiar with, I don't have it in here, Kyle Gray's work. Kyle Gray has a couple different angel decks. And the cards that came out were do the work, forgiveness and understanding, blessings and abundance. And it was like, okay, it was like in order. Like if you do this, do the work that you need to do, forgive and understand either yourself or others, it will lead to more blessings and abundance. And so I put the cards back in the deck and the person's still talking. I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to shuffle. I'm just going to pull out another card and see if there's something else that they need to hear. I feel like there is. And that feeling that I get, I just want to share with you guys, that is something I used to ignore all of the time. 
I used to think, oh, that doesn't mean anything. Oh, I don't need to pull another card. I'll just ignore it. And I'm no longer ignoring that because that is not coming from me. And so I shuffled, I pulled a card and do the work came out again. And I was like, interesting. They really wanna like drive this point home that you've got some work to do. All right, just for fun, I'm gonna just shuffle again. So I shuffled the cards again and I was like, nope, don't pull that one yet. I shuffled a couple more times and I pulled the next card and it was forgiveness and understanding. And that's when I said, you've gotta be kidding me. And now I have to pull a third card. So I shuffled again for a few more minutes. I was like, nope, not that one, not that one. And I pulled another card, blessings and abundance came out. And that was just such confirmation to me that when a message needs to come through, it will. And you best believe it the first time. I think the other thing I really wanna share and talk about a little bit is how hard it is to kind of reintegrate back into your regular everyday life after an event like this. And so that's something that the attendees and I are talking about right now. And we'll be meeting this coming Sunday actually, just to reconnect and share some of our um, new moments, new ahas, new breakthroughs that have happened since we've been home. So when you attend an event like this and you are around such expansive thinking, it can be really hard to go back to regular everyday life where the rest of society is not on the same wavelength. Like you realize that either people around you um, aren't happy for you about your experience or maybe don't fully understand or maybe there's some jealousy there. And then also you realize how caught up in the small itty bitty details people get that don't really matter on an everyday basis. This is why I'm addicted to this work because it keeps me present, it keeps me aware, it allows me to in the moment zoom out big picture so that I don't get caught up in those details every day because that does not do me any good. There's nothing, I can't control anything other than myself and my environment, right? And so that's something we've been talking a lot about is how do we reintegrate and um, get support from the people that we love to continue doing this work because it feels so good. One of the other things I'll share is that it, it really came through for me strong during Demir's sound healing that I hate fear. I hate it. And hate is a strong word, but I really never want to allow fear to make decisions for me in my life. And I really do not like it when I see it happening for other people and I get very protective and I get very, um, active, I guess you could say, in, in trying to help people see if they're letting fear take the wheel, let's say, in the car. So that came through for me really in a big way during that sound healing session. Um, and as much as I hate it, I also realize that fear is also a guide for me. So oftentimes I look to what I'm afraid to as what I need to heal next. And that was just a really good for, reminder for me that while I don't like fear, there is a positive or benefit to knowing where your fear lies, as it might be guiding you to what you need to look at next. I realized, I also just wanted to share with you guys the vibe of what it felt like. Um, so when I look for the attendees, I don't, it, it, isn't just, it isn't just for anyone and everyone, right? So with these specific attendees, they all came with open hearts, open minds, and curiosity. And that lends to the feeling of the event. The event was far more magical than I could have even imagined. <laughs> I knew what I wanted going into it, but I never know exactly what it's going to be like till I get there. And that's part of the unscripted piece, right? And so I just want you to know that if you come to one of these events in the future, I can tell you what this one is like, but I can't tell you what that one's going to be like. I won't know until we're there. And that's kind of the beauty of it as well. But just know that with the people who, who attend these events and who come, they're looking for a pattern interrupt. They're looking for a breakthrough. They're looking for something because they're just not quite sure that they're totally happy with where they're at in life. Or maybe they're completely happy, but they want something else to add to it. They're looking to be around people who are expansive, who are big thinkers, people who are curious. And that's what this vibe for this retreat is all about. So I just wanted to share that with you and share that the energy of this event uh, is there's a lot of creative energy. There's a lot that happens in a short amount of time. And so if you're looking for something that can leave you feeling invigorated and inspired and like you're ready to make some changes in your life, whatever that might be, or you're just looking to be reinvigorated, uh, this is the event for you. So 
I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to get on and share a little bit more about the magic of what it felt like being there in that environment with that house, with the catering, with the people who were there. I do my best to really create an environment that feels physically and mentally and emotionally and spiritually safe, because that is very critical in order to open yourself up to any other new ideas or ways of thinking and being. So I wanted to add that. All right, so I think I'm gonna stop there. And if you have any further questions, if anything has come up to you or through you or for you while watching this video and you're curious to know more, please know that you can always reach out to me via social media or my email and ask for more information. You can ask to, you can book a 30 minute, free 30 minute call with me if you wanna know more through one-on-one -on -one time. But again, I plan on doing these retreats most likely on a quarterly basis because that's what I want and what I need. So I hope that this video was helpful and gave you the information that you were looking for. And I am just grateful that you're curious and that you're here checking it out. So I hope to hear from you. Hi there, my name is Haley Labosco, and I wanted to share with you uh, my top three reasons why I attended Unscripted with Mo. So the first reason why I chose to really just dive in and spend this $5,000 is really because I know that this is an investment for myself. I know that $5,000 is a lot of money, and if I would have overthought it, I probably wouldn't have gone because $5,000 is honestly more money than I have ever spent on myself in my entire life. But here's the reality. This was an opportunity for me to learn, to grow, and to better myself. So if I'm going to make an investment for $5,000, it better be within myself. So I just dove in and I just did it. The second reason why I decided to join uh, Unscripted was really for the relationship building. Um, of course, I knew uh, some of the participants who were coming along. I had met them throughout the years, um, just being on Zoom and interacting with them, but never to this level. So the sense of community, the sense of collaboration and um, the relationships that I was going to build, that to me was priceless. Um, and then I would say, finally, the last reason why I really, really chose to participate in this event was so that I can reconnect with myself. So I can truly understand what my needs are, what my wants are, where do I see myself, not just in a year from now, but five years, 10 years, 15 years, what kind of person do I need to be in order to show up and be the best version of myself? I really wasn't clear on what that looked like. And I felt like that this retreat would help me to find that clarity and provide me with the answer. So if you are looking for a way to invest in yourself, to create a community of collaboration and maintain relationships or create relationships that don't currently exist in your life, high level conversation that actually helps to pour into you rather than deplete you. And if you are looking for some clarity in your life, this is the opportunity for you. Years. There is nothing else to say. Figuring out who I am is not an easy game to play. But I'm gonna fall apart and give up all these old people. I'll be removed from a generational weakness The old for the new I'm changing, changing, changing I am, I'm changing, changing, changing I am, I'm changing, changing, changing I am, I'm changing can y'all sing that with me? I'm changing, changing, changing. I am, I'm changing, changing, changing. I am, I'm changing, changing, changing. I am, I'm changing. Sing it one more time. I'm changing, changing, changing. I am, I'm changing, changing, changing. I am changing, changing, changing. I am, I'm changing.